Hey, what's up guys? Matt Laidlaw here from Laidlaw's Harley Davidson. Back to you with another review. Today we're taking out the 2019 Fat Boy. Not a whole lot has changed since last year in the 2018 model year. Uh, they did add some new colors as to be expected this model year. So we're gonna be taking out this iconic bike in the Harley Davidson lineup. The Fat Boy has always kind of been a favorite among Harley Davidson riders. Mostly identified by its fat features, kind of a muscly drag bike is kind of what it's evolved into. Uh, especially after the new frame change that happened last year in the 2018 model year. And yeah, I'm, I'm a big, big fan of this bike. You know, I think the aesthetics are probably the top one or two or three within the soft tail lineup. I'm a big fan of the Fat Bob as well. Uh, I like the handling characteristics of the Fat Bob a little bit better, but the Fat Boy is just a cool looking, fat, wide profile cruiser motorcycle. So yeah, it looks great. Uh, it's just a great drag cruiser bike. Uh, I might be going with Nick. I don't know. Nick, do you want to go out? Sure. What are you going to ride, Nick? Uh, I don't know yet. A we'll little surprise. Okay. All right. Nick's going to surprise you with a mystery bike. All right, let's do this. So let's do a walk around, and I'm going to jump into some of the highlights on this 2019 Fat Boy. So you can either get the Fat Boy in a 107 or a 114 displacement from the factory. This is the FLFBS, which the S signifies the fact that it was shipped from the factory with the 114. I will say that Harley Davidson has recently announced that they're gonna be scrapping the 107 offering in the four models that you could get either a 107 or a 114 from the factory. That is the Heritage, the Fat Boy, the Fat Bob, and the Breakout. You can only get a 114 from the factory in these four bikes now. The FXDR was pretty much, you could always just get a 114 from the factory. So this is the industrial grade denim, probably my favorite color that was offered on the Fat Boy in the 2019 model year, which is why I'm using it in this video. But let's just start off with the front of the bike here. I absolutely love the looks of the Fat Boy. When Harley Davidson redesigned them last year in the 2018 model year, which by the way, if you haven't heard about what they did in the 18 model year, I'm gonna put a link in the upper right hand corner to a video talking about the complete redesign of the soft tail family from, from the top to the bottom. Anyways, definitely watch that video. That's gonna give you a lot of information about the bones of the new soft tails but yeah here's the front end i love the front end of the fat boy you've got your signature solid disc mag wheels on here they're called lakester wheels it's a machine cast aluminum wheel pretty much a signature trait of the fat boy don't let people tell you that the wind will blow it over in a crosswind that's the biggest bs myth i've ever heard in my life here is the front headlamp you've got kind of this freight train style in the cell headlamp a really cool distinguishing characteristic about the fat boy I just love the look of the Fat Boy. It's just like this really mean, modern stance. Speaking of modern, I feel like that's what Harley Davidson did with the Fat Boy. They really gave this bike like a modern twist on the old Fat Boy like profile and, and overall design. Here's a shot of the tank badging on here. This is a military tribute bike, guys, and there's a lot of things like the wings and the star and the USA on the bottom of the badge there that signify that. There's more detail that kind of goes into this bike and the name and the origin of this bike. I'm not gonna get into it. I, I've gotten into it in all my several fat boy videos in the past and I just get a lot of butt hurt people that are politically correct on my videos that don't like the fact that the fat boy was derived from one of the atom bombs that was dropped in World War II but if you want to hear more about that you can check check out my fat boy videos I've done before anyways this is the ventilator air cleaner yeah it's a really cool again modern style we've got some of the element exposed something that's really cool about this bike as well guys you got this uh, satin chrome finish on here that is like this dulled out chrome look on the rocker box covers and like the exhaust heat shields and the cam timer cover there which really looks cool you don't find this finish on any other Harley Davidson which again is another thing that makes the fat boy really unique we've talked about kind of trying to replicate this finish on like a custom bike that we did in the shop um, and so maybe look for that in the future you've got floorboards on this bike for a real uh, comfortable cruiser style ergonomics on this bike you got the harley davidson etched into the rubber floorboards there a lot of style points and, and traits about the fat boy that are unique to just the fat boy which is pretty cool one of the reasons why i think this is if not the best one of the best soft tails harley davidson offers as far as looks are concerned this is the hand adjustable 
a knob that adjusts the preload in the monoshock underneath the seat here. Speaking of seats, here's the seat here. You got a passenger seat and rider seat that are independent of one another. They can be detached. It's like a modular design, which is one of the other goals that Harley Davidson had when they came out with the soft tails in the, night, in the 18 model year, excuse me. Passenger pegs here. So this bike is set up for a passenger, not the most comfortable passenger seat and ride setup in the world, but not bad nonetheless. With the redesign in the 2018 model year, the ride comfort of this bike is a lot better than the old ones. You've got this uh, bullet hole center console liner there, which is kind of nice. So shot of the riser and handlebars, real simplistic design and the gauges there. You've got a speedometer, which is analog. Then turn the bike on, you've got digital like odometer, trip meter, and you've got a, a gear and RPM readout as well. The grips here are not stock guys. This bike is actually slightly used. We wanted to use a bike that we could put a little bit of mileage on here. So yeah, the grips are not stock. Here's a shot of the big fat 240 millimeter rear tire on here. Part of the reason why it has the name Fat Boy. You got those really cool Lakester wheels in the rear as well. You got the side mount license plate there. And just a cool fact for you guys, the word Lakester that the wheels are named after, a Lakester is actually a surplus aircraft drop tank. And these drop tanks that were up on the bellies of these aircrafts in World War II, a lot of times they were taken and reused or repurposed for these streamlined race cars that guys used to take out to the Bonneville salt flats. And basically the, the whole body was made from these tanks, these drop tanks off of planes, and they were used to, to do land speed races and things like that. So one more thing to kind of tie the fat boy in to that World War II era. And the 114 uh, displayed on the derby cover there. But yeah, just really clean, bulky lines on the fat boy. It's definitely like a muscle cruiser. Bars are real fat, internally wired, really clean. Here's a shot of the badge on the other side. You got four piston brake calipers in the front, two piston brake calipers in the rear, and a shot of the primary. It's got kind of that, that dull satin chrome finish once again to kind of match all the other color covers on the engine which I, I like that finish on the engine covers with the denim paint as well. I think this looks really sharp. But yeah, very simple uh, is as we normally find in Harley Davidson fashion. Yeah, with the shift peg, no heel shifter, like I said, you just have the, the toe shifter there. This is a new design of LED light on here. Came out last year. I actually put it on my Streak Glide. It's a seven inch light. Those seven inch lights will bolt right up to a touring bike as well a Batwing touring bike or like a Road King or something like that. But yeah, the overall stance of the Fat Boy is super nice. I really like the look of them a lot. Yeah, I think Harley Davidson knocked it out of the park. I felt like just reading people's comments, you either hated it or you loved it. As far as like the redesign and the style, I think it was a little bit too modern and futuristic for some people. I don't know, that's just my speculation. But I feel like it was very tastefully done with Harley Davidson sticking to the overall lines of the fat boys in the past but kind of giving it like a modern twist i think they should do that with more of their bikes quite frankly i think it looked really really good but they kept everything really really simple and clean on the fat boy as well like your fenders and everything are really clean they're like chopped just to show off the really fat wheels you got a 160 millimeter front wheel as well that's the biggest front tire as far as width goes that harley davidson has ever used and so you got yeah just really fat wheels on here Decompressing and hitting. I heard that's what I heard about the 110s. They run nice and cool. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Like an ice cube.
we just got off the bikes. Nick and I, we took the, the two fat boys out. We took a soft tail, uh, a twin cam soft tail, twin cam 110, fat boy S, and then the brand new 2019 fat boy FL FBS. So it has the 114 in it. So I wanted to get some of Nick's thoughts and kind of combine that with my thoughts and kind of give you guys you know, our opinion on the bike and, and how it kind of matches up with some of the other soft tails. So we just got off the, uh, the two fat boys and uh, they're both a lot of fun uh, in their own ways. They're, they're quite different from one another, but uh, they, the DNA and the, the core tenets of what the fat boy is haven't really changed. I just say that, um, that the new fat boy kind of embodies what I thought the fat boy would be even more than the old one does. So they've kind of taken the extremes of the bike where it was always this kind of muscle cruiser, didn't ever, never really had that much lean angle. It was really just kind of this straight line power bike that just gave you the sensation of just, uh, of, of power and coolness. Um, and that really hasn't changed. In fact, I'd say it's been magnified. Uh, most of the soft tails have gotten significantly better in terms of like their handling dynamics over the previous generation. Uh, the new fat boy, because they went up to a really big front tire and to the 240 in the rear, uh, I don't think it really made any dramatic improvement in handling. It does have a little bit more lean angle, but you still really got to muscle it around in the corners. And, and to be honest with you, it's just not the kind of bike that someone's going to buy if they're really focused on canyon carving. Um, that being said, around town, it's a blast, you know, from light to light, you know, it's really got this character and this charisma, especially with the 114, uh, where it just wants to pull and pull and, uh, you know, you're shifting up and right back in the power band. It's just a lot of fun to ride uh, around town. Out on the highway, it's, it's pretty comfortable. Definitely noticed the, the benefits of the new suspension on the bike. Uh, you've got more travel than you do on the old fat boy, and that really helps when you're hitting the expansion joints at 60, 70 miles an hour. Um, the brakes are dramatically improved, at least in feel. Uh, you know, I, I don't, I didn't do any, you know, super hard stops, but the amount of pressure required on the, uh, the new fat boy is, is dramatically less. Uh, and there's just this really firm response, right? As soon as you, you pull on that lever, you can feel the brakes biting. Uh, it's really effortless. Uh, there's no real dive on the front end like there is on the, the old fat boys. Really all the old so soft tails just had really soft suspension, um, which made them comfortable, but it did negatively impact both braking and handling and, and comfort overall because sometimes you'd, you'd bottle them out and trying to adjust those shocks underneath the frame was just kind of a bit of a pain. And So it's a lot easier to have the new bike set up properly. And then of course the suspension itself is just a lot nicer quality at this point. It's just a more modern, sophisticated design. So uh, I did notice significantly better uh, suspension performance, a lot less brake dive, uh, more comfortable out on the highway, and it'd be a lot easier to adjust for someone uh, to set it at their, their correct uh, preload rate. So uh, there's, there's definitely a lot of advantages to the new bike. I think stylistically, the new bike is uh, more eye-catching than the old bike. The old bike has got that really classic uh, look to it. To my mind though, it, when the new one came out, it almost instantly kind of dated the old bike. Uh, the new bike's got this like perfect blend of sort of futurism and classic American uh, look to it. It's, it's, it's almost like, uh, it almost looks like a concept bike from like the 1950s or 60s. It's got this really awesome look to it that is, is hard for me to describe, especially that satin chrome finish on all of the, uh, the engine work and the exhaust. I think it's a really unique finish. It's not found on any of the other Harleys in our, in our showroom right now. And uh, it's, it's something that really um, immediately attracted me to the bike. Unfortunately, just because of the handling dynamics, it's just not a bike for me, but I love the bike just sitting there. And I love the, I love the ride of the bike around town. It just doesn't really fit my overall riding style because I need my bikes to be a little bit more well-rounded. Um, but if I was the kind of guy who just wanted that kind of tough muscle cruiser, I was gonna ride it around town on Sundays, take it out uh, and just kind of hit up a, a near, nearby restaurant or something and just eat my, uh, my dinner or lunch and look at that beautiful thing parked outside. Like it would be a, a hard bike for me to resist, especially if I had the ability to have four or five bikes in my stable it would definitely be one of those bikes because it's just gorgeous. Um, the old Fat Boy is a good bike, but like I said, there's just been a lot of new updates to the, to the new Fat Boy and I think it kind of really does uh, personify or, or fully exemplify what a Fat Boy should be. It's a really tough muscle bike. It's a lot faster than the old 110 and uh, still has that charm and personality. And, it's just a, it's a big, big fun to ride. There's definitely a few things worth noting on, on the old soft tail frame. Um, you know, 
the frame itself is is definitely a lot less stiff than the new frame and it's heavier as well um, but in terms of quality of life not, I mean obviously that affects handling but there's other small changes that have been made uh, on the new bike that I think sometimes get overlooked that really do improve especially in Southern California and other hot environments uh, the rideability during the summer so uh, you know for example the, the old oil sump uh, or reservoir here is is right underneath the seat on the old soft tails and uh, well, it's cool to have these kind of external lines uh, that are, are routed throughout the bike. You know, hardly over the years, if you look at, you know, like an Evo versus uh, a Twin Cam versus a new Milwaukee 8, they've consistently just started doing everything internally within the cases just to, you know, reduce the number of potential spots for leaks. That's why the Twin Cams really don't leak that much. Uh, and the Milwaukee 8s just, I mean, we just don't ever see them leak at all. Um, you know, in the old Evos, while they run forever, uh, because they had all of these external, you know, hoses and whatnot, they would sometimes seep over time, especially now that they're older. That's just more understandable. But uh, by reducing the number of exposed lines, obviously that helps with mechanical simplicity. And then the tank itself gets actually pretty hot, and it's a little restrictive in terms of the overall capacity of the oil. Um, and so by moving it below the engine, uh, what, uh, what the motor company has done is they've reduced the amount of heat coming off the rider because obviously not only do you have a cylinder head there um, and that 110 gets real hot compared to the, the new 114, but you've also got the oil uh, reservoir there that's going to be giving off a lot of heat. Uh, and so, you know, in the summer, riding around on this bike, it's a lot less comfortable than it is on, on the new bike. Aesthetically, though, I'd say... You know, I think that actual oil tank looks nicer. Uh, I like that external uh, routing of the oil lines, and uh, visually, I think it, it's a it's more honest mechanically. Since this on the new Milwaukee 8 is just a cover for uh, the electronics housing and the and the battery, and then of course you have the suspension adjustment knob there. Um, you know, it's it's a really nice uh, nod to the old soft tails, and I think it it looks a lot better than having you know, some sort of other panel that, you know, doesn't mimic the, the oil pan of, of old, but uh, it's just a you know, kind of an unfortunate reality of, of consistent improvement that uh, sometimes certain things are, are lost when, when you gain other things. Now, being an all, all year rider here in Southern California, I will gladly give up just a smidge of aesthetics for reduced heat anything I can do to reduce the heat coming off any of my bikes, I'll gladly do. But uh, it's just one of those little things that sometimes doesn't get talked about on the new frame that improves the quality of life. And those little things like that, I mean, obviously that's just one component, exists all over the frame. You know, they, they've really had a long time to think about small changes they can do to improve the quality of life of the people that are owning these machines. And and uh, it's it's nice to, to see Harley, you know, making little steps like that, little transitions and changes that uh, go a long way to making the bike more fun to, to ride on a, on a daily basis. I have never used my, my USB port on, on my bike. Uh, I don't really mount anything to my bars because I don't like having uh, things get scratched and every bar mount I've ever seen etches black bars and I'm a psychopath so I, I just refuse I'd rather be lost than do that but for those who do like to mount things to your bars which uh, you guys are all wrong um, uh, that's a nice thing to have Nick and I had a lot of similar opinions on the fat boy but I thought I would just add some of my own comments and by the way guys, I think I'm gonna drop my numeric rating system. I feel like my videos are going way too long with that system. And I feel like I was spouting off a lot of the same stuff, video after video, that people got sick of hearing. Uh, maybe you guys weren't getting sick of hearing that, but I just feel like I was saying the same stuff. And so I really wanna just focus on the individual bike and the applicable information to that bike and how it relates to other bikes and, and I really want to focus more on who I'd recommend the motorcycle for and really what the pros and cons are the strengths and weaknesses of each bike so I'll use kind of my old rating system as kind of a guideline but I'm not going to assign a numeric value to each of those 10 categories like I used to do let me know in the comment section below guys if that's something that you want me to still do or if you'd rather me shorten up the videos a little bit and just kind of give you the information that I feel like you need relative to the bike that I'm reviewing. 
but so I mean let me talk first about the Milwaukee 8 so this has the 114 in it a question I get asked a lot is you know people want to know okay is it worth going 114 versus the 107 and it really it comes down to about 10% more power it does give you a little bit more giddy up if you're a guy that is all about the power then I'd say it's definitely worth the extra money uh, getting a 114 over a 107 however if everything else is kind of leading to a bike that's just a 107 that isn't offered in a 114 I'd say you're not making a really big compromise or sacrifice by going to just a 107. Um, and I get this question mostly asked like in the touring bikes, people looking at maybe a 2018 or a 2019. The 19s came out with a 1014 and personally I have a 107 on my street glide and it's, it's more than adequate power. But I will say this thing ripping the throttle uh, coming from a stoplight for a stock bike. I mean, this thing pulls really hard. Uh, there aren't too many bikes out there that you just feel like that bottom end torque grunt off the line more than you know a, a fat boy or one of these Milwaukee 8 114s. They're out there, don't get me wrong, but yeah, just for a stock factory bike off the line, this thing is just really, really fun to rip the throttle from stoplight to stoplight, like Nick said. And you know, beyond that, very balanced engine. Uh, especially for a Harley Davidson. Harley Davidson took all the vibration out of these things pretty much. It still feels like a, a Harley Davidson. You still have the core architecture of what makes a Harley a Harley. You know, the, the V twin 45 degree push rod system, air cooled, but it runs a lot cooler with the precision oil cooling that pipes oil around the heads to, to cool off the bike, which is kind of nice, especially for those of us that live in, in warmer climates. So, the handling and suspension the suspension, suspension is good on this bike, especially when you compare it to the old soft tail frame, like Nick mentioned. Now, I will say the handling on this bike is probably, I, I would say the Fat Boy is probably the sluggish handling bike that Harley hardly makes it's kind of a tie between this one and the breakout it's a little bit different but i think overall collectively they they both handle equally as bad now i don't say that to deter anybody from this bike i just say that to let people know that hey if you're looking for a bike and you do a lot of like canyon riding or you do a lot of twisties and things like that and you like going fast through the twisties this bike's not for you however i know a lot of people don't do that type of riding i know in southern california we're kind of spoiled where we have our canyons we have our beach roads and we have a lot of different varieties of roads um, but i know you know maybe in the midwest or other places especially guys that are sticking on like surface streets from stoplight to stoplight you know that may not be a priority for you and you know this thing is super fun just to, to drag around on surface streets it does pretty good on the freeway however if you're going to be doing like the the freeways like i've done in this video like the four lane freeways I would recommend and like going distance i would definitely take a heritage or a sport glide over this bike and a uh, heritage is really the best overall like mileage like long distance mileage overnighter bike in the soft tail family now the touring bikes do that type of stuff better than the heritage as well but if you like the the weight of the heritage a little bit little over 100 pounds reduced weight for most of the touring bikes then and you want to stick to a soft tail then the heritage is a good option for you now the braking is extremely good on this bike you know it's it's definitely enough to stop this thing in a hurry a lot of people are always worried about not having dual disc brakes in the front these modern brakes on these harley davidson's guys even though they're single disc they stop really really well so yeah i wouldn't have any hesitation there as far as utility goes the Fat Boy is not really the best utility bike. You can get bags for it. You can get passenger backrests for it. But if you're looking for something to you know, block the wind and have storage capacity and things like that, this will do it. You gotta spend extra money to get those items, obviously. Um, and they are offered. However, there are bikes that are better uh, as far as utility goes in the soft tail family than the Fat Boy. Really bottom line, guys, the guys that I recommend the Fat Boy to, guys that just want a awesome looking, uh, real muscly, iconic Harley Davidson. Anybody looks at a Harley Davidson, I don't care if they've never ridden a motorcycle in their life. I don't know if, I don't care if they don't know the first thing about motorcycles in general. They look at that and they know right away it's a Harley. Most people know about the Fat Boy, even if they don't know about any other models in the lineup, they know about a Fat Boy. I'm not saying buy a bike, to appease other people, but I'm just saying, I say that to give an example of just how recognizable it is and just that, that real classic look and style of a Harley Davidson with a modern twist. Like I already mentioned, I really like the, the modern vibe that the Fat Boy has on it this year. If you're a guy that does a lot of surface street riding with the occasional you know, two lane highway, this, this will do great on a two lane highway, four lane highway where you really pick up speeds, have a lot of wind and, and buffeting and things from other vehicles. It does okay as well. 
There are better soft tails in the lineup though. If you're looking, if you have uh, an area where you do a lot of canyon carving and things like that, it's probably going to want to pass on this thing. I believe the best way I can describe what you feel in going through turns is if you have any type of fluctuation in your speed with your throttle or your brakes, it really throws off and jars your line in a turn. And again, if you go slow enough, it's really not a big deal. And I'm sure you probably get used to it, um, but it does not handle and react the way that most motorcycles handle and react. Again, it's not like a scary thing or or something that isn't good for beginners it's just different and the bike just wants to stand up with those really fat tires on there that really fat 160 millimeter front tire it just it it makes the handling a lot different as well but again not the best for like long sweeping turns where you're really trying to go fast through the turns and i know there's a lot of guys out there that like to ride their bikes fast through the turns and they live for the twisties not a bike for you anyways guys if you have any additional questions hit me up in the comment section if you're looking for a bike in southern california hit me up come on come down to the dealership uh, come see us or hit me up on instagram thanks a lot for watching guys take care